that's why we called our movement Actions of Compassion. It's actually Because action. it was about actions, mm -hmm. right? Multiple, multiple, multiple actions. So yeah. if you watch people, even people that say they're compassionate to me, I can go out with them and watch their behavior very, very fast. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. You stopped by that person on the street that, that needed some food and you threw the sandwich to them. But I guarantee, have you ever talked to them and do you know their story? <laughs> and everybody in my circle, even the ones that say I'm so compassionate, can't tell me the story. <laughs> yeah, and right. then they're like, okay, you got me. I got a problem. And I said, yeah, you need to step up your game. We have like a very, very special guest on with us today. Her name is Bonnie Jill Laughlin, and she's done some amazing stuff in her career. One that she's been known for is to become the only woman scout in the NBA for the LA Lakers. Yes. It's a huge achievement. Yes. Very work. tough, but, yes. Um, but work your little butt off and you can, you can make things happen. Of course. Right? And then the part that I love the most too is she started her own charity called the Hounds and Heroes. And what that does is uh, she supports the military veterans right. and animals. How do you think sports celebrities could become more compassionate and bring more kindness to the world because a lot of them got so many followings on social media, mm -hmm. which we've already talked about, and they don't utilize it right. enough to do good in the world. They don't, and it's it's sad that they've got, I don't think they realize the impact that they have. Just one tweet, Yeah. just um, going out to a third world country for a couple of days, going and feeding the homeless, like little things that, you know, that me and you maybe do all the time, yeah. just them doing once can just, they have so many role models and so many people that be like, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people look at celebrities and say, monkey see, monkey do. They're doing that, I better do that. Yeah. So, but that could be turned into something so positive. rescue all these wolves and a lot of these wolves, well, all of them, they're, they're not able to be um, released back into the wild because they've been living with humans. Okay. So what's great about it is that they pair these wolves up now with different kids who are from you know, the inner city, uh, underprivileged kids, disabled kids, and they bring these kids in and they have like these camps and different retreats and they're able to connect with these wolves. Animals are very therapeutic. Yeah. So it really helps these children to, you know, some, if, you know, these kids are in these areas where they might have to be, you know, in a gang or, you know, certain yeah. situations and they're able to now work with these wolves and be able to have, basically, they're trying to make a, a better life for themselves. Yeah. so many things when the compassion movement started but one of the things was is I really truly felt that it was the right time that we could create a, a, a brand around compassion that becomes very 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 big and it becomes all about giving back and I believe that we're at the right time where the world's ready for something like that. I don't think athletes should be role models no. and, and I work in sports I mean yeah. your role models should be your parents, teachers, firemen, police, you know whatever yeah. it may be. It should, it should be celebrities, yeah. you know, yeah. and unfortunately... It, the only way it should be a celebrity, if a celebrity is actually taking on a role yes. and doing something good where it even overpowers a celebrity. Right. Where they're kind of like, oh yeah, you're great at basketball, but you're more known for this. Yes, like Shaquille O'Neal is fabulous when yeah. it comes to um, giving back. Like he, every year during Christmas, he, he dresses up as Shaka Claus and he goes into the like inner city and... and uh, you know, gives all these toys to yeah, kids who wouldn't have toys, really cool. um, helps the homeless. He's really, really good. Clayton Kershaw, the pitcher for the Dodgers, he goes over and does mission trips to Africa, to wherever, helps build homes. So there are some that That's are really cool. good. Unfortunately, it's not... Um, it should be a lot more. Yeah, it should be on, it's, on a mass it's scale. Not, it's yeah, not, that's the, that's the problem. Is it? And that's where we were talking about where society is so indulged in this celebrity and this Instagram pictures and stuff, but you look at it, it's a lot of the, the pros and the successful people, even in the business realm, that they're the ones driving it. Right. Because they're the ones not, they're showing the Lambo, 
and the success, but they're not going out and doing stuff with charities right. and nonprofits. So if they were showing that, they would direct the population yeah. to that. One um, precaution here. Mm -hmm. Willow is a little more dominant, mm -hmm. meaning uh, you don't sit down. I think if more people took the time to reconnect with nature and go on and do stuff like that, we like talked that, about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like yeah. take time and go yeah. somewhere like this where it's secluded. Yeah. Or, just talked you know, about even right. Yellowstone, one of the national yeah. parks, and just take a moment. You can connect with them and really reconnect with nature, with the planet, with Earth, with with all with the animals, all of it. I think we would be a much happier just species. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm, that smells good. Oh my goodness. It smells like strawberries. Oh, I know. What, oh my he, goodness. What, is that that's the shampoo? That, I checked looking from him. <laughs> Why does he smell so good? That's our oldest that's that. Really? really? Yeah. <laughs> We're like, really? We never bathe them. What? We, we groom them, we just take some of the, the, the coat uh, in the beginning of the spring. You don't spring. think that's weird? That's, that's so crazy. Weird. But that's, that's a healthy that's animal, right. and that's an animal that, that, that are not, wow. I mean, they don't... Wait, that, that is crazy. It's, does, tell me it doesn't smell like strawberries. It does. You know, when I get here and see stuff like this, it's like, see all the work that you've done and everything you've done. You know, it inspires me more to, you know, to be able to showcase what you're doing and get it out there. You know, I truly believe that, you know, success in doing things is about coming together and helping each other. So this is called a medicine wheel. It's a, it's a Native American representation of cycles of life. So this is it's aligned with the four directions. So east, you know, where the sun comes up, that's birth. And then south is, is teenage years, maturation. And then west is where the sun goes down, so that's uh, you know adult life. And south, where there's no sun, it's dark. Uh, it's, it's old age or the time of wisdom. So when they come, they get to. We give them a, a stone on the first day of the program called a journey stone. It's like a semi-precious stone that they all carry. Look at that! Wow. So the the kids pick a stone, and this is the journey stone for the eight weeks and beyond. Mm -hmm. So they. We place it here in the amazing wheel at the beginning of the day. The last thing we do at the end of the day is they come and they retrieve it. And then they take it home and they, they keep it in their pockets or yeah. bedside, bedside table as a way to remain connected to the walls. Get so you have the Apache blood? Mm -hmm. so my mom does, yeah. yeah. I'm like, see, yeah. I'm drawn. Yeah. I'm just, I'm yeah. I can see the name. And they right, went yeah. through my, these old, you know, when you go through the ancestries yeah. of, and my grandfather ended up looking and um, the great, 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 great grandfather is Geronimo. That's where I get my mean spirit. <laughs> uh, well, my wife is part Blackfoot. Oh, wow! So, so, but that wasn't the. Inter I mean, um, what brought me to the states was that um, I was searching for a spiritual teacher, a particular spiritual teacher that I wanted mm -hmm. to learn from. He lived in LA, and so that was brought me to the states in, in the first place from Argentina. I became an apprentice, uh, now I'm a teacher that work, I speak internationally. And for me, the Native American culture is a, is a, is a very great way to explain some of these principles mm -hmm. because they are kind of mainstream, mainstream. Mm -hmm. so it's a way to explain it to the kids, and a way to explain it to, you know. And wolves are a, a big figure in Native American mm -hmm. culture too, so. So like with my funding, I mean the amount of um, uh, natives that step up, even banks now to help me, like they all really wow. work hard together. Yeah. And that's the where we've lost that in the world. 100%. None of us work together anymore. <laughs> and then we wonder why everything's going this way. That's what yeah. I'm talking it's about. True. How can we help each other? Like right. how can I help you build this bigger? How can you, you know, how yeah. can we help yeah. each other? <laughs> we have become extremely selfish. It's all about me, 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 mm. what materialistic things I can, I can obtain and hold on to and I want the bigger car and the fancier house and this and that. And, Personally, I, I find that disgusting. I think that we really have lost what the true meaning of life is yeah. if some people ever even knew it. We have come to a crossroads and if we don't change something, we're not gonna be here for much longer. That's no, what no. I said, we're, we're really not, not going to, yeah, I know. Right. We're not, I mean, the animals are, if we, if we died at the same rate as we're killing animals, animals? I, I know. think we'd be dead in, yeah. in oh, like yeah. 19 years, yeah. we'd be extinct, something like that. Yeah. So it's absolutely ridiculous. So we really need to start changing the attitude and the mindset of 
of the masses yeah. really needs to happen. Absolutely. That's true. And that's why and all of us have to stand up and lead. Yeah. And one more person comes. I mean, that's why we created the show. The underlying and in, in was yeah. the foundation yeah. to create more compassion mainstream and, and keep pay, everyone and keep, keep paying it forward. Absolutely. And helping yeah. people and, and that's the thing. The um, foundation, the youth foundation, is all about children. Right. So it goes so hand in hand. Yeah. And, and she unique. loves stuff with animal welfare and right. conservation and all that stuff. So, but I think, don't you think bringing him out there, bringing him out here would just absolutely. And yeah. Even if there's any of the kids that have gone through your program that would be available that day to kind of tell her well, we from their bring perspective. Him, we bring him on a program. Because I would love to my have my, my Wolf program. Connection as part. Uh, they have a couple charities underneath their umbrella of, of the foundation. I would like the Wolf Connection to be under that. just got back from Wolf Connection and uh, I probably had one of the best experiences of my life. I can't wait to share this episode with you. You think it was awesome? Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. It's probably something that everyone would want to do, right? Yeah. Experience that. Not, not every day can you say, oh, I spent time with yeah. some wolves. You know, people say animals don't have a soul. Look at those wolves and tell me they don't have a soul. Yeah. I mean, there's something very alive there. Yeah, it's <laughs> totally the alive. Just, it's pretty neat. Yeah. So I'm glad you guys are able to see that because it's something I'm, I'm so passionate about what they do. I think it's just... The way they combine yeah. helping these kids and then you know rehabilitating them, but then also doing the same for the wolves. It's like yeah, a win-win. It is. How did you get involved with them? A friend of mine introduced me to Tao, and then I just became very passionate about you know his mission and became close to Tao, and now it's really like you know been my mission to help yeah. raise the funds that he needs for this project, which you saw, and to yeah. expand and to like you said save more wolves, bring more children in, and. I just think what he's got going is just something that I don't see anyone not liking it. Yeah. You girls always wear your sunglasses because right. it was hot, and, and I was like, I was up. like, why does everybody have their sunglasses on their head? Even though it's bright, even though it's, it's so sun. bright. That's right. So I was like, okay, I gotta put my sunglasses on my head, and then thank goodness I did because I would have got attacked by a wolf if I didn't. And then, and then you said, maybe I should follow what Bonnie Jill's doing, but maybe I shouldn't because I go in there like kiss, kiss me. Oh my goodness, you're so comfortable with animals because that's like, you know, your whole lo life. That's like you I actually feel the most comfortable. Yeah, with animals. You're kind of like an animal. So I so am. you are. So I was like watching you, but then I was like, I can't be like you because you just like walk right up to the wolves like just like you live in the pen. Like seriously, you do. Part of the pack. I've never <laughs> seen so many so comfortable with animals like yeah. as you. See, yeah. that's why they connect with you so well animals in general right. because your energy is just so like what? Open, open, open. Then, right? open. Wow. Well, that's what I'm saying. Now it's another. Now instead of like, now it's another hundred to two hundred thousand sponsorship money. Oh yeah. Like it's it's a different level. But I think that if the because the sponsors, if they see like if it can be created too, where a sponsor says, okay, we're doing Vancouver, L.A., New York, and Boston. Now they actually have a four city event tour that they come on. So now it's a bigger thing for them because their brand name is being seen all the time. Yeah. It's tied to a compassion movement. Like my one friend that deals with all the Fortune 500 companies, he was like, you know, like Shane, realize right now, like every company is so trying to find something compassionate or kind to tie to right now. Mm -hmm. If they can find it and you and how you're building it, they're looking. Can Stories. you do make, make it look like um, we um, have a cat face or something? Yeah, I could, but where were we today? We are at the Wolf Connection. Yeah, what's your Instagram? What's your Instagram? <laughs> we'll do the next <laughs> I'm going to post that and then we're going to do your Instagram next. It was something that I think I kind of was born with it, you know, like yeah. in my DNA, you know, the way I was wired was to, it felt good to like give back, to help animals, you know, yeah. kind of being the voice for the voiceless. Yeah. And so it just, you know, it kind of just started at a young age, you know, doing as much as I can as a child, right? Um, raising money for Humane Society at birthday parties, pulling every stray dog that came across. And my dad was going crazy because I was always bringing him to the stray dog. So. <laughs> and then eventually it just started to like develop into where, okay, once I started cheering um, for the Niners, the Warriors, and the Cowboys, I was like, okay, I can even do more with this. Yeah. You know? And as my career developed, I was able to use that platform to do much more. Got and uh, regardless if I end up being successful in my career or not, I still would have continued, but yeah. it did help that I was able to use my resources and contact and different things to really use my work. Compassion is also being able to spot 
things, people or animals or whatever it is, may be suffering and then be able to act on that to help them. And so- Acting on it. Acting on it. Yeah. So I think if we consistently act on it, the compassion part, then we can create a better world and move faster. If everybody did a little something, the world would change. Right. But it's usually a small portion of people working to try and do a lot of something and everybody <laughs> else stepping back and watching right. and saying, well, yeah, that's a great idea. I totally support that. But you're not doing right. anything. How do you support it when you're right. not doing anything? Right.